she could have settled to just be sort of a blonde movie star. You know, she was mad, mad, mad. If, she, if she was dumber, she would have been happier. I just think women's lip came too late for her. Yeah. Maybe Gloria Steinem and Shelley Winters. She could have uh, lived on and gotten old and fat. And... Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and, and I don't know what she could have played. Spring Bryanton and Rose. Yeah. Well, How does an actress retire? Well, you play. She wanted to play character parts. She said that she wanted to, you know. No, play. she couldn't. She may have said it, but she mm -hmm. couldn't bear, bear it if she didn't look uh, no, she absolutely would've... beautiful. When we were both very young and struggling, we used to sit in Schwab's drugstore and fantasize about the future. And both of us, uh, along with uh, having uh, glorious uh, careers and Oscars, of course, wanted the perfect husband uh, with perfect children. Marilyn had very little self-worth. She didn't trust uh, that she could do something by herself. And so very early in her career, she began to get coaches. When we went to the actor's lab, which was behind Schwab's, uh, and I took classes there, uh, she would sit uh, when she was allowed to in back of the theater and watch, and watch, she watched great actors from the group theater in New York, but she didn't even think that she was good enough to, uh, to take classes. She uh, uh, respected intellect, all the... Uh, I was busy going out with handsome uh, young movie stars. She was attracted, maybe father figures, but certainly older men who were very smart. Yay! We were blonde Hollywood babies, but it wasn't sad when we began to get good roles. It was the most glorious and wonderful thing. We had fun and all this stuff about being doomed and... Um, uh, Having a miserable life is totally untrue. It was exciting and wonderful, and she got a used black Cadillac and drove people around, and I had a new white Cadillac that Paramount got from me wholesale, $2,500 with everything on it. And we really had fun. At one point, we used to pick up our unemployment checks and go to the racetrack and bet $2. You know, bet about $6 all day long. And you can be as alone with Oscars and jewelry as uh, anybody, and the real values are your family and your friends. And Marilyn had it, no family, and uh, she was suspicious of most friends because they turned out to be using her. Even now, I, I watch people watching her films, and they become alive, and uh, uh, she, she uh, had that quality. And she could project it. It was uh, an earthy, just magic. That's why it's still there on the screen. Uh, let me ask you quickly here about uh, you and uh, Marilyn Monroe. Now, were you were you really good friends, or just we lived together? Well, there you go. And we were very good. Friends. Yeah. How long a period of time was this? Oh, about a year, on and off. When I met Vittorio, she moved out. Yeah. Did, did, uh, did you uh, ladies, uh, you women, compete for uh, men? No, we endorsed men. <laughs> well, I went out. Uh, uh, I didn't what, what exactly is the testing procedure for that? <laughs> Boom. All right. No, it was, no, let me explain this. Marilyn really didn't like anybody under 50. She wouldn't have liked you. Mm -hmm. She, uh, 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 really, if you didn't have gray hair and uh, I don't like older men, older men, father and, figures, yes. perhaps. And, and yeah. we once one Sunday morning, we were just kidding around. We used to get culture to one, you know, listen to classical music. It used to come on big records and they gave you uh, lessons. And then one would put on Frank Sinatra or Nat King Cole or something. Well, one day, we were both just getting over unhappy love affairs, and we decided, why shouldn't we be like men? You know, just score. You know, sleep with who you think is attractive. And it, why not? And anyway, we, met, we decided we would make a list and then show each other the list after an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, on her list were people like Einstein, uh, Ralph Bunch. Uh, who's that man in Africa who just... Uh, uh, Schweitzer. Schweitzer. Um, 
Uh, Wendell, thinking he might be on the list. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> he was just waiting to get down to the W's I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> on my list was uh, Clark Gable, uh, you know, uh, Brando, things like that. Yeah. And. Um, I don't know how many, you know, we separate, she got a, uh, well, never mind. Anyway, uh, many years later, after her death, I was in uh, Strasburg's apartment. There was her mother's white piano, and on it was a silver uh, picture frame and a picture of Albert Einstein, and on it, it said, with love, respect, and thanks, Albert Einstein. Mm. And uh, someone made a film about this called Insignificance about supposedly Marilyn's affair with Albert Einstein. Maybe it would have affected peace if it had gone on. Mm -hmm. so, so it did happen, or there's room for speculation? I don't know You're exactly. You're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. I would guess, given his white hair and everything, it happened. <laughs>a book about Marilyn, a whole book about it. We first met at a place near Columbia called the Studio Club, uh, where just girls could live. And she was under contract and I was under contract. And both of us sort of were blonde bombshells because we thought that's what they wanted. But she was very bright, not educated, but very smart. And she had been thrown around. In fact, my sister and brother-in-law owned a theater called the Circle Theater that one night we came out of it. Charlie Chaplin was directing his son in whatever woman knows. And suddenly Marilyn froze and she was looking across the street and I didn't know what happened. And she said, that's an orphan asylum. That's the one they sent me back to where they didn't want me anymore. And she had just finished Asphalt Jungle, the one with the, the Houston. And she was just getting some... Uh, we both had been dropped in by Colombians, said we were unphotogenic and no good and everything. And, uh, and she, she uh, it was like once, we were, at, uh, we didn't have a, uh, it was very expensive after the water cry to find an apartment. And Sidney Skolsky would meet us for lunch at Schwab's. I'm, I had gotten here, stars, stage, screen, and Schwab's drugstore. <laughs> and my sister, something had happened, my sister's a nurse and we'd been getting funny phone calls. So my sister went and sent for my parents. You know, we wanted, I was, uh, she had to come because I was a minor. By then I was 17 and she was 20 or so. And she, these funny things that happened to us. And I was really angry at her and I was sitting at Schwab's drugstore and Marilyn used to uh, like do something with a straw and then put water and make a little snake. And I was very upset and Sydney said, what's the matter? I said, well, I don't know. My sister went and sent for my parents. And she dropped the water and she said, I wish I had somebody to send for her. And then about a year later or so, we just had a tiny apartment. My parents were sleeping in the dining room. Uh, Sydney found us an apartment on Holloway Drive. It's still there. And there's a great empty lot with wildflowers next to it. I think that Los Angeles doesn't know who owns it. It's still there. It was like outdoors. You walk up three flights. and uh, You roomed uh, with Marilyn Monroe. Yes, and he found us this apartment. But my father had to come over and sign it because they weren't too sure we were reliable. The, so we had this apartment. She liked little rooms. She took the smaller bedroom. I had the bigger one. And we, about a year, until I met Vittorio in Italy, uh, and then she felt she had moved out. But, uh, but she never lived with anyone else. What does... What have we missed about Marilyn Monroe that you might know? What have well, we, what do we see, not she know? had no family. Uh, uh, when she left New York, I owned a little house. That's a really nice house. And the producer of the last picture she did uh, rented it from me. And he, his wife was Israeli. And I called him and said, what about Marilyn having this other wing? She shouldn't be alone. She should, Because she was, you know, just divorced from Arthur Miller. And she left New York. And they said, sure. So she... Uh, stayed with him a while, but she, she, I was kind of a role model for her. I, I didn't realize it's sort of sisterly. Because <laughs> when I cut my hair short, she cut her hair short. I moved to New York, she moved to New York. I joined the actor studio, she joined. Even once I got married, she got married. <laughs> and we used to share, uh, we had a bikini bathing suit that we used, to, we used to wear the same clothes. Believe it or not, we were the same size once. <laughs> <laughs> and we shared a mink coat and so the Jerry Geisler, the divorce lawyer, and um, do you have any feelings about her death, Shirley? I think it's such. I, I get so angry when I hear it that I don't know what to do. She, 
twice before had tried to commit suicide, once when she had a miscarriage, and she had nobody to turn to, just nobody. And I was in New York, and she was in California, and this marriage had broken up, and they had her do a nude scene, a swimming scene, and she was 36. What was she, go what was she gonna do when she was 40? You know, and she didn't really believe that she was such a comedian. And, and she was, you know, in um, that one with Tony Curtis and... Um, Some like it hot. She was brilliant. She was brilliant. And I saw her do things at the actor's studio where she was brilliant. She was fay and, and she, she read a lot. She really interesting books. And she was interested in the civil rights and politics. And she really got involved in those things. But she didn't have a support group. You know, she was afraid of people. And... Um, I, I never had a, uh, uh, an exchange in New York, because I didn't think I had to have one. In New York, I di in California, I did. And her psychiatrist uh, had gone to California, uh, Lee Strasberg and Paula, who were surrogate parents. Uh, I had introduced them to her, and uh, are we they were gone. We're talking about guilt that night she died. Then. Yes, and I think she had twice before. I think she... I had some whiskey and she couldn't sleep and took some pills and forgot how many I have done that I never have a drink after dinner in fact I hardly ever drink except when I work if I have a very emotional scene I have to dry have some wine since that happened but you've always felt guilty that maybe she tried to call well you. you know you feel guilty there's a Chinese saying anybody you save their life you're responsible for them or the rest of it Marilyn Monroe. Tell us oh, about Marilyn. All right. See, now this is what I was getting at. The kid is 18. He's running for mayor. You're 18. You're roommates with Marilyn Monroe. That's true. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we were friends, and we weren't successful yet. And do uh, you know where Holloway Drive is? It go, it's oh, a street yeah. that goes from Santa Monica up to Sunset. Yes, yes. And, uh, there's there's a, a famous uh, dry cleaners there at that intersection, Santa Monica Boulevard and Holloway. Holloway, Holloway whatever they said. A dry cleaner? Dry cleaner, yeah, right there in that See parking lot. See the difference lot. in generations? I remember palm trees and champagne. He remembers dry cleaners. <laughs> well, they, they, of course, serve champagne in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure in Hollywood. So anyway, this is your old neighborhood. And, and we were cooking dinner one night for Dylan Thomas, who was a fam famous poet. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had to go get something at the store and I said, Marilyn, please, you wash the lettuce, I'll be right back, get it dried, get it ready for our, to make salad. And I <laughs> came back about a half an hour later and she was cleaning each lettuce leaf with a Brillo pad, very careful. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It sounds right to me. And, and it's because she just didn't know any better, had never cleaned salad I, degrees Well, she before? wanted it to be very clean. Yeah. <laughs> she, she knew who Dylan Thomas was, important writer, I didn't know uh -huh. that. Once my friend Marilyn was at, she worked at 20th and I worked at Universal, and she came in, into the uh, room where they took pictures. You had to, if you weren't working on a movie, you had to take stills. This is Marilyn long. Monroe. Yes. Because you lived together for a year. Yeah, we, we did. Uh, and we were friends for a long time since her name was Mar Norma Jean. She used to talk like that. I mean, I, I, and I was never a soft spoken person. And I used to say, <laughs> what, what? <laughs> And she saw me posing with my unbucked teeth, and she said, that's very sexy. And I said, is it art? You do it. It's, you do, uh, <laughs> I think it's stupid. And I tried posing with my mouth closed. And she, forever after, posed like this. She did it better. When you lived with her, you used to make lists of all the men you really wanted. And yeah. on your list well, was... Well, after the Second World War, we said, well, the double standard is over. Little did we know. Uh, so we ought to, just like men do, make lists of people we would like to have love affairs. I don't know. Do people have love affairs now, or are they just uh, yeah, screw they do it? Yeah, they do. Yeah. And uh, so uh, uh, Sunday mornings, we would get culture. We would listen to Bach and Beethoven, and they used to sell... Uh, l records with little books, you know, of culture. And we decided one day we should make lists of the attractive men that we knew that we would l love to have love affairs with. And uh, we took an hour and then we showed each other our lists. There wasn't one man on her list under 50. <laughs> uh, and uh, she thought white hair was sexy. She had Albert Einstein on her Yeah, list. Albert Einstein. I think she made it. Stuff. Really? Yes. <laughs> How did he think of the uh, theory of uh, relativity? He inspired. inspired him. 
<laughs> what goes up must keep going up. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Something like that. My question is, we all know you're Marilyn Monroe's roommate and that you were there during the va 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 voom years. Tell us about discovering Sean Connery in London. Well, let me first uh, put in something that I forgot. I'm opening next week all over the country in a film called Heavy, which is wonderful as a, a new young director, Jim Mangold. And uh, one of the things that was terrible about Marilyn's life is she couldn't get older. The studio wanted to be the sex pot always. She was 36 when she died, and uh, uh, I think they wanted her to be 25, of, you know, in all the films she did. And that's one of the terrible things about getting, being an actress. I was very lucky when I, uh, George Stevens again, when he asked me to do Diary of Frank, Diary of Anne Frank, for which I won an Oscar, da-da-da-da. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, he said to me, if, I was 33. He said, if you play this woman who's 53 at this time, you will act all your life. And he was right. And actresses have to go into character parts uh, quite early to extend to have a long career. And I'm ever grateful to him. And she wasn't allowed to do that. And she was a dear friend of mine. Sex spots are time dated. That's right. <laughs> they still do it.